All right, so you've grown your broccoli and it's about time to harvest the crown or the head of broccoli, the main big ball of broccoli. And you've heard me talk about the fact that broccoli gives off shoots after you've harvested the crown, but you're skeptical. Well, if that's the case, stay tuned because this episode, this episode's definitely for you. Hey everybody, I'm Alan Schaefer. Welcome to Custom Garden Solutions. In an episode I did on February 18th called Broccoli and Cauliflower Harvest, and it was part three of a series of episodes I did where I showed how I put the uh, seeds indoors, started the seeds indoors, where I transplanted them outdoors, where I did a harvest. Well, in, in part three, I talked about after you harvest, the crown of broccoli, that if you continue to let the plant grow, and if it's cool enough and it's watered properly, you'll get these shoots of broccoli coming up shortly thereafter. And these shoots are tender, they're a little bit smaller, and they're just totally delicious. Well, if you were skeptical that I was being truthful with you, <laughs> then check this episode out. We're gonna harvest them. We've got a ton to harvest, so let's get going. And this is just one of many. We've got to do, and when we're done with that, we've got to go over on the other side of the garden and do three more rows. So we got quite a bit of work ahead of us. All right, so this is cauliflower over here, but this whole row is broccoli. We've got a whole row on the other side of the garden. We'll get to that next. As you can see, this is just loaded with shoots. Let's get in there and get some. is gonna taste good. So I cut it. A little stem isn't gonna hurt you. And what you wanna do is, is cut it all. Kind of the reverse of build it and they'll come. This is cut it and it'll grow back. By cutting it, you're telling the plant to shoot up more. If they're tiny and well formed, I'll leave them because in two or three days, these will grow back. So the little tiny ones, I'm just gonna keep in there. And by tiny, I mean like about marble size. If the golf ball size are bigger, then I'll cut them. So this is just from the first plant. And as you can see, some of these, like this, these are just perfectly formed. These are tremendous. All right. Now some of these I put here in the back, they're a little bit more leggy, maybe not as good looking. They taste the same. <laughs> All right, this one's flowering a little bit. Might not want that one, but you know, as long as they're not flowering, 
So this is just from one plant and I have about 30. If I were to have dinner tonight, that's about all the broccoli I would want. So I'll steam these up. The ones I don't use, I'll blanch and freeze. And we'll talk about that in a future episode. All right, so that's just from one plant. And I let some of the smaller shoots uh, grow. So those will, in the next, next day or two, be ready. So that's one of my messages is the um, shoots grow very fast. You know, if you think about it, the roots have already taken hold. There's good root structure. The leaves are, uh, you know, two foot by a foot. Uh, they're photosynthesizing like crazy. It's a healthy plant. When you cut those shoots, you're telling it a plant to give its energy to new shoots, to keep doing what it's been doing. Um, it'll also stop it from going to seed. When it goes to seed, it's a signal to the plant that the plant's about ready to die and the seeds will form new life and it'll continue. So that's uh, the plant evolution. But um, just keep on top of it. So I've got, you know, one, <laughs> one plant harvested. I've got uh, seven more to go in this row. And then on the other side of the garden, I've got another four or five rows with six or seven plants per row. And I'll show you uh, what the total harvest is when we're all through. Let's get to it. The big spider web here. Not quite sure what that's about. These are really some nice ones. Now I have not done a great job of getting out here and doing this, but the fact that it's probably about 80 today, maybe a little more. It means I need to get out here and do it. Otherwise, the plant's gonna go to seed. It'll start to die. And the shoots will stop. So these ones that are flowering a little bit, a little bit leggy, compost. So go ahead and cut those. And I'm throwing these right into the garden on the other side. I mean, you could eat those, I just choose not to. You could actually eat the leaves and everything on a... Like right here. There's a good example. This, starting to go to seed, a little leggy, goes into the other side of the garden where it'll just compost away. And on this side I have cauliflower that my friend Keith picked. He should have pulled a whole plant. I'll pull it today. This just doesn't look very good. Getting a little, it's flowering, a little leggy. You just compost that. But right next to it, look at that. That I'll eat. Now I've got quite a abundance. So I can be picky, and if I don't like the way they look, I'll put them in the compost pile. The rest, I'll steam up in the next day or two, and what's left, I'll freeze. I'll do an episode on that coming up shortly. But I'm leaving some of the like really tight, 
about marble sized broccoli. I'm leaving some of that and I'll just come out here in two or three days and take care of it. But if it's bigger than that, I'm pretty much chopping it. I'm not seeing any, 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 not one. Cabbage worms or really any aphids or white flies or flies or gnats, really nothing. Very healthy. All right, so one row of broccoli down, four or five more to go here. I uh, just use scissors to cut the broccoli shoots. They work great. That way I can cut and grab with the other hand and put it into a, a bag or a box or whatever I have. And um, if you notice that I have sunshade here behind me, in our last episode about sunshade, we talked about this. In the other broccoli episode, we talked about it. But uh, the sunshade episode was just recent. And the, the western sun is behind you and it's shining on this side of the garden. So it's mid afternoon here in Phoenix. It's about 80 degrees. So, of course, we've got the sunshade on the top. But this is side shade and I'll just roll this up kind of I don't have the hooks for this but we'll just kind of force it up there this one down here I'll do the same so I can get up oh. a backbiter as curly would say I think that was curly Kind of put this up here so it's out of our way and i'll redo this one this is getting old but i'll just roll it up we have the pvc on the bottom and the, and and what that does is it weighs it down so it doesn't blow all over the place but also makes it easy to roll up um kind of helps with the appearance in the garden a little bit So it doesn't look too messy. All right. So if you wonder why we're using the sunshade on the side, uh, first of all, we got sunshade over the top. That's about 70 or 80% sunshade. I'm not sure exactly. And this is about 50% on the sides. And I'm gonna, I just took it up for a few moments so I can get in there and work on it and then I'll put it back down. But broccoli is a cool weather crop you know it prefers sunny temperature in the 60s right and you'll get a lot of growth it'll be sweet um, the the broccoli crowns will be well formed so it starts getting hot out and you'll see in the back some of these are going to seed see little flowers they're bolting and once they bolt they'll start not putting out as good of um, broccoli shoots. So I'm using the, the shade to keep the plants cooler so we can extend the season a little bit longer. Another thing to extend the broccoli shoot season a little bit longer is to harvest them. If you continually harvest the shoots, they don't go to seed. They don't bolt, all right? So let's get to it. We got four or four, five more rows to go. All right, so I've got some work ahead of me. That's four or five more rows. This one here, look at that. Look at that shoot. That shoot, that shoot's almost like another little head. It's tremendous. So we got a bunch of little shoots. We're just gonna chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Again, so I'm going for about a golf ball size or more. It's marble size. I'm gonna come back here 
it's if it's lanky, I'm leaving it. I mean, right here, two, three, four, five. That's just a. Oh, those are gonna be tasty. Oh, get back here, you runaways! These doggone jailbreakers. And when I talk about lanky, and you probably can't see this, I'm talking about when they get long and sparse, all right? When they're grouped together, when they're bunched and they're tight, that's what I'm looking for. Now, if it were down to my last plant that were giving off shoots and I didn't have a lot of broccoli, I wouldn't be so picky. I wouldn't be picky. But I'm not. And I've got an empty row here, so I'm just throwing some of the shoots there. It'll just compost in. I'll throw a little dirt on it, help it out. All right, well, it took about an hour and a half to finish up harvesting, but I wanted to talk to you real briefly about field heat. So in the hour and a half that I was harvesting the broccoli shoots, about every 10 minutes or so, I was taking a bag and I was bringing them to the truck with the windows down where it's nice and cool so that they could cool down. So I'm taking the broccoli shoots from nature's refrigerator, which is, you know, plants when they're in the ground. And when I harvest them right away when they're in that, we're in there, when they're in that heat, uh, it's just not good for them. They won't last as long if you have field heat on them. So make sure that if you're harvesting beans or peas or tomatoes or peppers. It doesn't matter what you're harvesting. At a minimum, get them in the shade, but if you can get them in your house where it's cooler or in some water, do that. So make sure you minimize the field heat. Uh, this is something urban farmers do. You know, when they're out there farming for a living, uh, they, may, they may harvest for 10 or 15 minutes and they're making sure that they're putting their crop off into the shade or in some cases in a bucket of water. I actually intended to bring a big cooler with a big chunk of ice. It doesn't need to be ice cold, just cooler than the outdoor temperature so it doesn't begin to spoil right away. So it's field heat. Make sure you take care of that. Let's go see what our haul was. Uh, it's quite impressive. And then I've got to get these out of the heat into the house and I'm going to, for the most part, many of them I'm going to uh, blanch them and freeze them. So here we go. All right, pardon the uh, shadows, but that was from one plant. Uh-oh. And here's the mother load. What I'm loving is no bugs are flying out of this or... So, I mean, this is enough broccoli for an army. In another four or five days, I'll have the equal of about this. Some really good looking brock. Broccoli. As Dana Carvey would say, broccoli. So look at this stuff. I mean, here's a couple more. Look at this. Some nice little tender ones. Some larger ones. This is just stupendous. So I don't want to leave these out here too long, but I did want to share with you kind of the harvest. I mean, this is, 
<laughs> pretty deep. All right, here's some more. Just some nice little guys. That one's got my name on it, I'm gonna eat it. Yummy. I'm not seeing any cabbage worms, any aphids, any type of white flies, nothing. Very healthy. Couple of these, this one, eh, borderline, but it's not really flowering. Just some good looking broccoli. All right, well, I'm up to my uh, elbows in broccoli, and I'll bring that home, and I'll chop it up, and I'll blanch it, and I'll freeze it. I'll be chopping broccoli, as Dana Carvey says. I'll be chopping broccoli. 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 Something like that anyway. Check out the Saturday Night Live, Dana Carvey, chopping broccoli. It's funny, 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 funny. It's about a minute long. But anyway, I'll get that back. I'll freeze it up. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found any value or learned anything, it'll help us out a lot if you hit the like button. YouTube likes when you do that. And subscribe, leave a comment. Hey, I really like the episode. I really love the Dana Carvey, or the Dana Carvey stuff was really horrible. <laughs> You're not funny. But uh, my name's Alan Schaefer. I'm with Custom Garden Solutions. Our channel's all about helping you grow herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff so that you can live a healthier and happier life. If you're new to the channel and you wanna learn all about growing herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff, then start today by subscribing. And so you don't miss anything, hit the notification bell, because you never know what I'm gonna be talking about next. But for now, I'm gonna be chopping broccoli. Chopping broccoli. I'll be chopping broccoli. I'll be chopping broccoli. I'll be chopping broccoli. I'll be chopping broccoli. Chopping broccoli. I'll be chopping broccoli. A backbiter. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. You're not funny. You're not funny. You're not funny. <laughs>